Dan Celia. Welcome back. Financial Issues. I'm Dan Celia. It's great to be here. And of course, the night after the State of the Union speech, I told, uh, I was just telling Devin how I punished myself at three o'clock this morning. I watched it again. Uh, something I've never done before. Usually once is more than enough of any State of the Union speech. But I felt like I was so aggravated last night, uh, mainly because of the lack of substance or the, the I mean, basically it was, you, we could have all missed it and not missed a thing. I mean, it really said nothing, uh, nothing of any kind of substance. And it was kind of comical at some points uh, to hear him contradict himself and to say some things. I was saying uh, just before we went on the air, uh, Devin and I talking about it, I said, you know, it. I love some of the things he said, some of the things that he said that were so off the wall because it, it's good for, it was good for the midterm elections. And, you know, you've got to be, wait till you see all the uh, people that are going to be distancing themselves, all the candidates in 2014, they're going to distance themselves from even thinking about uh, running or have this guy campaigning for him. I mean, it's, you know, it's just not, it's just not going to happen. Um, I like what Jay Leno said last night. He said the, th- the uh, president threatened all the Democrats last night in the house by saying, if you don't applaud for me, I'm going to campaign for you. And so uh, there's a, I think there was a lot of truth to that in the sense that obviously that wasn't the threat, but you know, they got to be scared to death. Like, please don't come into my state uh, leading up to the 2014 elections because it's just, it, it's going to, it's going to kill me. I got enough problems, but to hear some of the things that he said, to hear some of the things like the deficit cut in half, to hear um, you know the, him talking about Obamacare, to watch the poll, both Republicans and Democrats take dramatic dips during those periods of time, I thought was wonderful because he still hasn't realized or his handlers have not told him yet, don't say anything like that that's either going to leave people to the conclusion that you truly are clueless or you're insulting everybody's intelligence and common sense. And, you know, I I sent out on Twitter that it, the, the whole speech adhered to the reality that these progressive liberals are clueless and blinded by their ideology. And, you know, so he adhered to that reality without wavering one inch from that reality. There's very little economic news. You would think that they really believe that the economy is doing well. At one point, he said this, clip 44, Devin. Over more than three decades, even before the Great Recession hit, massive shifts in technology and global competition had eliminated a lot of good middle-class jobs and weakened the economic foundations that families depend on. Today, after four years of economic growth, corporate profits and stock prices have rarely been higher, and those at the top have never done better. But average wages have barely budged. Inequality has deepened. Upward mobility has stalled. The cold hard fact is that even in the midst of recovery, too many Americans are working more than ever just to get by, let alone to get ahead. And too many still aren't working at all. Do you think? And you know what the beauty of that is? He's indicting himself. He's acting like he's the fir- this is the first month of his presidency. There's no one to blame. It's been five years. I mean, I, I found it amazing how many times he, he, he went through this self-indicting, <clears throat> saying basically that I haven't done anything. Basically saying in five years, things haven't gotten any better. We've seen the median age still go up to far too many people still unemployed. I mean, indicting himself. How smart is that? From a political standpoint. And I got to believe that there were enough smart Democrats sitting in those seats saying, oh, my word. 
He's just driving home. I mean, it, you can't continue at this point five years into to the presidency. I mean, he's got to be smart enough, right, to know that he owns all of this, one would think. He went on right after he said too many Americans are trying way too hard just to try to get by. Too many still out of work. Then he said this, clip 45. With the economy picking up speed, companies say they intend to hire more picking people Picking up this speed, year. he just said all these people. And over half of big board. manufacturers say they're thinking of insourcing jobs from abroad. So let's make that decision easier for more companies. Both Democrats and Republicans have argued that our tax code is riddled with wasteful, complicated loopholes that punish businesses investing here and reward companies that keep profits abroad. Let's flip that equation. Let's work together to close those loopholes and those incentives to ship jobs overseas and lower tax rates for businesses that create jobs right here at home. Really, do you think? You've been talking about that now for five years. As a matter of fact, Mr. President, you talked about that in 2008 when you were campaigning. It's not like this is new to you. You're talking about the American economy and the American worker. It should have been the first order of business, not five years later after you have created a, a, an economy that is crippled, to say the least, bogged down in dysfunction of Washington and the inability of Washington to be able to make any change or to do anything worthwhile. And you are admitting that, and I appreciate that. But you're talking about things that a, a first State of the Union speech should have been talking about. In the midst of economic suffering, in your very first State of the Union speech, that's what you should have been talking about. And then there should have been action. And it's a beautiful thing. Because the American people are going to get to judge everything the president has said. And as a matter of fact, it's already happened. That's why you saw those negative trend lines from both Republicans and Democrats going down at the same time as he was speaking, if you were watching Fox News, as he was speaking these things. Because, really, you're saying this again? It's been five years. But... If you're one of the unemployed Americans or underemployed Americans, don't worry. Because he did offer this solution. Go ahead, Devin. Today, most workers don't have a pension. A Social Security check often isn't enough on its own. And while the stock market has doubled over the last five years, that doesn't help folks who don't have 401ks. That's why tomorrow I will direct the Treasury to create a new way for working Americans to start their own retirement savings. My, I, my RA, it's a, it's a new savings bond that encourages folks to build a nest egg. My RA guarantees a decent return with no risk of losing what you put in. And if this Congress wants to help, work with me to fix an upside down tax code that gives big tax breaks to help the wealthy save but does little or nothing for middle-class Americans. Offer every American access to an automatic IRA on the job so they can save at work just like everybody in this chamber can. On the job, what job, Mr. President? What job are you talking about, first of all? You're talking about people saving for retirement. People don't have jobs. That's a beautiful thing, but we have IRAs. We have Roth IRAs. We have individual IRAs. Oh, they don't guarantee the principal, like your government IRA, my IRA, is going to do, apparently. He's going to guarantee there's never going to be any losses. Does anybody out there, is anybody out there so naive as to think that it, they are going to have these guarantees without the government, the government controlling these funds and backing them with government guarantees or a government-like annuity? Really? 
is this another power grab or is this really good for the workers? Is the idea here going to be to incentivize American people to roll over their IRAs into these accounts that the government can have total control over? Remember the fine print. It wasn't even that fine. Remember the details of Obamacare. I would suspect that my IRA accounts will have to get passed before we're going to know what's in it. Or it's going to be just determined by executive order. And it's not going to be a piece of legislation. Can you imagine what the fine print on that thing is going to look like? Don't get all excited over that. Get all excited if the president's going to commit to creating some jobs and to have a thriving economy. There was nothing new. In this speech, he took credit for jobs. We've created eight more. We've seen unemployment rates in this economy go down. He's going to take credit for the oil production. We have the highest oil production. He should have said, we have the highest oil production in spite of the fact that I tried my best to stop it. As a matter of fact, I'm still not letting drilling in the Gulf and those that were shut down. I've done everything I could, but the private sector took over and I lost control somewhere along the line. You would think that's what he's, that you would think that's what he's saying. I mean, that's what he's saying. That's exactly what he's saying. Unbelievable. Well, I, you know, it's, I mean, he indicated that he's not afraid to use the pen once again. So look out, gun control. There's going to be a whole lot of other things that are going to, going to be happening by executive order. Just remember the beauty of executive order, folks, in case you don't realize this, is that the next executive, the next executive, the next president can undo any executive order by the previous president. It doesn't take an act of Congress. That's the beauty of it. Now, let me ask you something. Just thinking about that. Do you think 2016 elections are going to be important? Hmm. I'll tell you, we are in, when I, when, every time I see the president speak, I realize what deep, deep trouble we've gotten ourselves into. Not what deep trouble we are into, but the deep trouble that we've gotten ourselves into. And we have to fight for the liberties that we have left. As a matter of fact, I'm going to use it as a reminder the Give Me Liberty Tour in Oklahoma is going on. It's picking up incredible momentum. Next Friday, a week from Friday, the 7th, I'm going to be at First Methodist Church First Methodist Church, 131 Northwest Northwest 4th Street in Oklahoma City that evening for the Give Me Liberty Tour. If you don't know about it, at the bottom of my first page on my website, you can click on the logo there and get some information. But I'm going to be there. I'm going to be greeting, uh, hopefully, a lot of my listeners that are going to come out. But we need to get behind this. I'm going because we need to support it. I'm going because we need, I personally am going, my wife and I will be there so that we can lend our personal support for the efforts that are going on in the state of Oklahoma through this Give Me Liberty Tour. If you don't know about it, you need to find out about it. And if you find out about it, you need to tell a friend about it. And I'm going to be there. I'm going to be at a number of these events. If I'm going to be to as many as I possibly can, but one of them is going to be Friday February 7th, Friday evening, at First Methodist Church, 131 Northwest 4th Street, Oklahoma City. I hope you'll join me there. We all need to be there. 866-300-9298. We're going to get to the phones right after this.